Okay, it looks like we are live, and we're coming up on uh, five minutes late. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, this is an emergency broadcast I was trying to pull together, and I was optimistic at the 4.30 start time, but we, we are getting the show in anyway. And so we have an emergency broadcast. We have some issues we need to deal with. And I'm wearing the North Face shirt because it is green. And this is honoring our subject matter, which is Rolex, Rolex watch. Should you buy a Rolex watch or should you hold on to a Bitcoin? So let's assume you can buy a stunner. At this point, Bitcoin's well over 50,000 USD. And you can buy, according to my search on um, Chrono24, you can buy a solid gold Daytona. Rolex Cosmograph Daytona for that price range in mint condition. What do you guys think about that? A yellow gold Daytona. What do you think? And by the way, I'm going to play around with the um, toy here. Again, I'm going to play around with this. Let's, let's put the 02002 stunner on the screen. How's that? How do you like that? And there's a faux pay shot with Brianna's lovely 038. So yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna play around with some buttons here. Let's see, let's put both logos up there again. I'm gonna play around with the buttons again today. And Brianna, speaking of green, uh, let me turn on the lights. Hold on a second. Hey Google, turn on living room lights. Okay, so so um so Brianna released a video uh, and she got slimed. Uh, she released it on uh, Twitter. If you guys aren't following at BriefitDance on Twitter, I highly recommend you do so because she got slimed in the video that she released today. It was really cool, really cool video. And you can find all her social media links. Let me bring up her page here, and I'll show you her page. You can find all her social media links on BriefitDance.com, BriefitDance.com. Follow her on Twitter. That's where we, she released a video of herself being slimed, slimed. So how's all that going on? Okay, let me see if I can uh, pull this up on my iPad here. There it is. Okay. And I can get caught up on the chat. Some folks were in really early. My goodness, somebody was in at 3.33 p.m. Good evening, Craig, for everybody. That was like an hour before showtime. Kyle is, was in the house at 426, so he was early. Stig was in the house holding down the, um, holding down the fort. Uh, Mr. Submariner, that's Kyle. Kyle has a sub. I think he has a no-date sub stunner. And let's see. And hey, Stig, how's your life uh, on your side of the world? We've got to get a full report. <clears throat> I'm on a month waiting list, not for a Rolex, but to get a haircut. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I could say it's been over a month since I've had my hair cut. I haven't been, of course, even before this whole thing, I didn't get my hair cut that often. I'm kind of cheap. But when I do get my hair cut, I do leave a nice tip. So there's that. Uh, Beefret Dance says hello to all, speaking of Brie. And uh, let's see. Um, the watch is good. LOL, that is unreal stick. Okay. It looks like we are live, said Blue, at 4.34 p.m. Uh, yeah, we were just before 4.35 p.m. We were live. Kevin in the house. Green dial 18 code Daytona is more like 65 to 70 K if you can find one. Okay, so we might have to wait a week or two <laughs> for Bitcoin to get up to a green dial one. <laughs> um, but there are some with the, with the black dial on uh, Chrono24. Uh, so there's a few in the $50,000 price range. But yeah, hey, be patient, folks. Be patient. We can get Bitcoin up to 65 or 70K. Kevin in the house. Kevin, so what would you do? If Bitcoin got up to 65 or 70K, what would you do? Would you sell one Bitcoin and buy a Daytona with the green dial? And um, Brief It Dan says, filmed by midatlantictv.com. And uh, let's see, Eduardo is in the house saying, hey, guys, and Kevin's in the house, and he's laughing out loud. Kyle says, I like the green dial, 18 karat gold one the best for sure. Oh, I agree. That would be the way to go. That would be the way to go. 
where's Lance? Maybe he could find one for a deal and send us a link. What Find, uh, if anybody can think of it, find a link to one with the green dial. Let's see what a price is for one in mint condition green dial. Now, the, so I take it that the gold, give, seeing as how they're selling for a premium, because I think they're like 36000 new, aren't they in that price range new, uh, yellow gold? Um, considering they're selling for a premium, I'm assuming that there's a wait list at all the ADs, even for the gold ones. Is that a reasonable assumption? Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, so you got to pay a premium. Hold the Bitcoin, says Kevin. Craig, when will Bitcoin reach $1 million, do you serve? Um, maybe two more halvings. And this is assuming that... Um, that the uptake continues the way it's going, that that more and more institutional investors start buying, that more and more high net worth individuals start buying, that it starts being used uh, to move money around the world by various money transmitters and so forth. See, all of these things will increase demand for Bitcoin, <clears throat> will require people to have more Bitcoin. And there's just a very limited supply. I mean, I think people are finally coming to grips with the fact that 21 million units is not a lot of units. And so, <clears throat> yeah, two more halvings. So 2028, I'd say about a year to 18 months after the 2028 halving, uh, we've got a real good shot at Bitcoin being a million dollars each. Be you serve in the house? That's a very good question. Eduardo's in the house. The time, the time piece gentleman in Dallas has several green dial Daytonas, I believe. Okay, price point. Uh, Kyle's in the house. Craig, I sent an email of a gold GS. I remember you saying you would almost rather have your O209F. This is basically it. Uh, let's look. Yeah. That would be intriguing. I'll tell you, though, I, 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 I have mixed feelings about that because I when I do look at the second hand on this it is it is sweet it is sweet the sweep is sweet what do you guys think about that do you think a sweep can be sweet but we're going to take a look we're going to take a look at the stunner that um that uh let's see here wow okay Wait, okay, so that's in yen or something, that price. Can somebody convert that to what it would be USD? So this is the SBGX330. Very interesting. Kyle is really digging deep. He's really digging deep. Let's see if we can translate this to English. Let's see how successful we are on this. Look at the exterior size here. 38 by 10. Yeah, it's the same size, basically. Uh, movement, 9F. Wow. That is cool. I'm going to, um, I'm going to save this on my, on my uh, eBay as a saved search. And, uh, but let's do that live so that you guys see, in case you guys aren't aware how I do this. Um, I'm going to cut back to that one while I bring up eBay in one of these in one of these uh, windows. Give me a second here. See if I'm successful. Oh, by the way, here's here's what we had up on eBay. That's the 0389F stunner that Brianna has. So we're going to do a search right here for that unit. All right. And you see there, nothing comes up. They show some engine oil, right? So I'm going to save this search. So if one ever gets listed on eBay, I will get an email, an email from eBay saying, hey, the SBGX330 is in stock. But I like that. That's a good, that's a good find, Kyle. It's a stunner. I didn't know they did that. It's very, very interesting. See what you find out here? Kevin in the house says 15K. So it's fifteen thousand. So it's a you know ten thousand dollars list price is about ten thousand dollars less. I think isn't the O2 now twenty five thousand list? 
I think it is. So, yeah, so so <clears throat> that would be cool. That really would be cool. I mean, if I didn't have the 002, I would be very tempted, tempted to get the 9F version. Because talk about just a grab-and-go, heavy-use, heavy-duty use dress watch. My gosh, how robust is a 9F movement? You can, hey, by the way, the lovely lady Brianna, um, did you put the photo of you slimed on your, on your Brie? Did you put the photo of you being slimed on, um, on Flickr? I'd like to see one of the slimed photos. So I'd like to show one here on the show. So let me know where we can find one and, uh, may maybe email a link to me. And we can show a picture of you slimed with your watch. Oh, it, you put it in the Grand Seiko group. Let me see if I can find this. Give me a second here. I think you put it in the in the in the Grand Seiko group. Da, 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 da. Let's see if I can find this real quick here. I can't do anything real quick. Tell you the truth. Um, oh, I think I asked you to put it in the talking time one, too, but I think you put it in the Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko Owners Club, I think. Let me double check here. Of course, they do a lot of posts, so I might not be able to find it that quickly. But that's funny. <laughs> she, she posted a thing saying, I wear my watch even when I'm getting slimed. I don't think I'm going to be able to find Oh, here it is. Wow, I got lucky. I got lucky, folks. Here it is. I'm going to... Oh, okay, so here's all the comments. Okay, so let me get back up to the post. Here's the post. And... <laughs> How funny is that? She, we, we shot a video where she had to get slimed. It was a paid video. And she's raking in the Bitcoin, folks. She was paid in Bitcoin, point, I think 0.01 Bitcoin. That's not peanuts, by the way. And, uh, and there's the watch. It got slimed in the process. So I literally put it under in the sink, under the running water, and scrubbed and cleaned it. And then I let it dry. I wiped it off with a microfiber cloth. Then I let it dry. And then I... Um, an hour or two later, we treated it. We treated the leather with some leather treatment. And people were like, oh, you can't run that. You can't put those under running water. That's too much pressure and all this stuff. The thing is fine. The watch is fine. I don't know, folks. We don't baby the watches around here. Proof positive. Proof positive, folks. You, you think we, we talk a game here? We don't walk the walk? She's even got the faux pay on there. It's even got some slime on it. See the slime on the faux pay? Okay, we use our watches around here. Who slimed Rihanna? <laughs> oh, boy. Maybe you can talk to her on her next live stream about it. Um, Craig, did Breeze 9F survive? Yes, it survived, and it's keeping perfect time. And yes, the Oyster Flex strap. Okay, I think I'm behind on the comments. Let me see here. Make sure I didn't. Um, Craig, would you wear a Rolex Kermit with that shirt? Why not? Why not? If I had one, I would probably wear it. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, what does the Oyster Flex strap have to do with anything? I guess I missed something. It's on Horology Talk. Yes, she put it on Horology Talk also. She sure did. And this is the post on um, the Grand Seiko owners group. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and people are like commenting, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that with my GS. My GS stays at home in the box. It stays in the box, the inner box, and the outer box. And, and then I put a pillow around it. I put a pillow around the outer box. That's how I take care of my GS. Oh, boy, they would cringe if they saw how we use our GSs. They would, they would cringe. Um... We did some mechanical work on Brianna's Honda Accord the other day, and we were both wearing our Grand Seikos. 
Oh, jeez. She was wearing her gold stunner. She always wears the gold stunner because it's the only one she has. So, yeah, she always wears it. Um, Craig, at what price point will start selling Bitcoin? Will I start selling Bitcoin? I'm not planning on selling at any price point. It's it's going to I think it's going to keep going up. It's designed to pump forever, so why would I sell it? Now, I do have some Bitcoin deposited with BlockFi. And by the way, there's some news about BlockFi. Um, there's some FUD out there uh, that they're having some issues or whatever. I don't buy it. I think they're a solid company. But there's some FUD out there going around. And so I do not recommend that you have all of your Bitcoin with a third party. See, when you deposit your Bitcoin with BlockFi, you get interest on your Bitcoin. But you're giving up control of that Bitcoin. You're trusting them to hold your Bitcoin safely, just like if you put money in a bank, right? So I do not recommend putting all of your money in BlockFi. But, hey, if you have a relatively small amount of Bitcoin, you got to grow your stack, right? And, and so putting it with them, you get, um, you get some pretty decent interest. And I think they're a solid company. So I do have some deposited with them. So I get some income off the Bitcoin that way. And so that's my plan is to just keep getting income off my Bitcoin and not have to sell it. So what do you think about that? Uh, use your ETH holdings to buy a day date. LOL. <laughs> yeah. The Ethereum has not been doing that great lately. Everybody was talking about how it's going to pump and how it's going to flip. This is going to be the flippening, how it's going to flip Bitcoin and all this nonsense. Oh, I had a super chat here. <clears throat> um, Craig, my dad just offered me the Daytona reference 11615500041 rose gold chocolate stick dial. It will be my first Daytona and very excited. Should I buy? Wait, my your dad offered it to you? Uh, no, my AD. <laughs> I can't read. I'm sorry. My AD offered me this Daytona. Well, should you buy? Um, I would check it and see uh, what they're selling for. Or, or could you flip it for a nice profit? Uh, if you can, I would not be against that. I would not be against that in any way, shape, or form. I've done it when I was young. I flipped some watches. I did it. I absolutely did it. I flipped a red sub and some other watches. So, yeah. If you can buy it and you can make some money, 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 money off it, I would do it. I wouldn't buy it to keep it personally. I wouldn't. I'm not a Daytona fan. But if you can make some money, absolutely, lutely And if you can make enough money on it to buy yourself like a a gold date just or, you know, uh, or a, uh, you know, maybe just a steel date just, you know, that would be a great starter watch. My first Rolex was a, um, was a date just, all steel date just. It's a great starter watch. That'd be a cool move. If you could buy the Daytona and flip it and get enough profit to buy a, uh, a date just free and clear, what a move that would be. Who slimed Brianna? It was a paid um, crypto slimer, uh, paid for the ad, uh, but uh, the video. But technically, I guess you could say I slimed her because I poured it on her. I had to get up on a ladder and, and pour it on her. It wasn't easy. But anyway, I, I, I uh, assisted in the sliming. We had to make the slime, too. We made the slime out of uh, mashed potatoes and some coloring stuff that we bought, and a little bit of oil, and a lot of water, and a lot of stirring. A lot of stirring so there aren't lumps. So that's how you make the slime. We ended up making a pretty big batch. We had a bunch left over, to tell you the truth. And no, I didn't eat it. I didn't eat the slime afterwards. Let's see. Um, uh, what else? Uh, my AD offered me the same Daytona as Timekeeper. Hmm. Is it a, can you make a profit on those or are they not flippable? Kevin D's in the house. I have a Kermit that I never wear. What would be the best way to move it? That is a very good question. It, there are no great ways to sell a watch. Any way you do it, there's risks involved. Uh, you do it through like a, th a third party, like Chrono24, they're going to take a hefty cut, right? eBay takes a hefty cut. 
and you can still have chargebacks. Uh, you can try to sell it in person, then you're risking, you know, getting mugged and somebody taking your watch if you're meeting them somewhere, right? Uh, there's a lot of risks associated with reselling a watch. Maybe some other guys can give some some tips in the chat, uh, the best way to um, to do that. But yeah, it's not all a bed of roses. It really is not. So there you go. Uh, several weeks back. What did you think about a Kyle super chat? Um, super chat. Uh, well, I already saw. I, I've seen the super chat now. I guess I was behind. <clears throat> Kyle, I didn't get it. I like the yellow gold more. Don't really like the strap. Not to say it's a bad piece. Just not my style, really. I hear you, Kyle. They're going at a premium. Okay, probably should have gotten it then. Didn't look at gray market pricing. Craig, did you get some slime on yourself? I got a little bit on me um, after the fact. I got a little bit on me. Um, you know, the things you don't think about. Okay, once once she's totally slimed and she's got to come back in the, the place here, how do you keep from getting slime all over the place, right? And so I took um, some coveralls, uh, Navy flyer type, coveralls that were actually my uncle's and if you want i'll show them to you I, we've i've since laundered them but uh they're from like the 1950s they date from like the 1950s and so i brought them out and had her step into them and we zipped it up so we basically covered her completely with coveralls and then we put a towel around her head and then hustled her in so that she could uh, shower and, and get all that stuff off of her. And then we put everything that was slimed in the laundry and laundered it and it all came out fine. But in that process, I did get a little bit of slime on me. So, uh, Hey, never a dull moment around here. Um, Craig, did you get your AD on the telephone already? I heard that you are going to your AD with Bree. No, they won't, they won't return my call. Um, they have actually officially canceled their sponsorship of Frederick.com, and I've replaced them in the where where they were. They were actually number one under shopping, and I replaced their position with Little Treasury Jewelers. <laughs> Steve said, "Oh yeah, I'll take their spot." <laughs> so Steve is all over the place on my network. He's all over the place, and uh, Colonial Jewelers is history. They are history. So, yeah, I'm not going to be buying anything from them. Uh, let's see. Uh, LZ Company. Hello, Craig. Greetings from Texas. Yes, I have contacts that will buy it from you by the Kermit. Okay, there you go. That's the way to do it. Do it through a trusted individual. That's what I would recommend you do. Kyle Jett in the house. Eduardo must know. Uh -huh. um, at Kyle Jett for your Daytona. I was talking about Kevin and his sub. I didn't grab that Daytona. Uh, wasn't it too cold to be slimed? No, it was a warm day. It was a warm day here. It was like um, in the 60s, upper 60s, and sunny. It's been nice here for the last few days. Are you banned from Colonial Jewelers? No, I mean, I could go in there and I could spend money, but I, I spend money with people that do business with me, and they, they canceled their sponsorship. And they, they canceled it in large part because they're mad that I've been promoting Grand Seiko and been pr 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 promoting a Little Treasure Jeweler so much. Uh, and so that's, it was kind of a protest. And so they cut their nose off despite their face. Steve will get even more business now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how that whole thing works. Um, okay, haha. -ha. I've bumped elbows with big players in the... Uh, Canadian watch market, but Kevin would have to ship first and get paid once it arrives just because he's a private seller. Okay, all right. So maybe you guys can network and talk about all that. Kyle's in the house. I saw a video go live from Steve the other day and nothing was streamed when I clicked on it. Well, I don't know what happened. I talked to Steve. He had no clue what happened. He didn't even know he went live. So I deleted it. But yeah, it was there, and it had like it, the view count said zero, and when I clicked it, it wouldn't play. So, just weird foibles, weird things. Sunrise beaches. Craig, do you 
also have GBTC, yes. I have quite a bit of my Roth IRA. I'm heavy in GBTC. Um, and it's been doing great. I'm up like 300% or something since I bought it. It's insane. Uh, Derek's in the house. Um, what is another? And the neat thing about that is all the profit in the Roth IRA is all tax-free. Tax-free money. So there you go. Um, and I might buy some more. Even at these high numbers, I might buy some more. I'm not sure, but I might. Uh, Derek's in the house. What is, an, um, what is another Rolex dealer, Craig? Can you go into New York? Um, what can be done about day dates? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see what we'll to look into all that. Eduardo's in the house. Inventory check. Sourced a 16013 yesterday and sold it this morning to a dealer. Needed some service, so wholesale was the best route. I'll tell you, Eduardo is out there moving and shaking and making things happen. I, I'm impressed. He's, uh, he reminds me of a young version of myself. That, those are the kind of deals I'd be doing. I remember I bought a uh, three-quarter size date chest with a Jubilee with a white gold bezel. Nobody wanted those watches because it was kind of like between a woman's and a men's size. And it had water damage. But I got it cheap enough. I made a ridiculously low offer, the guy selling it. This was back when they sold them on Craigslist, right? This was before the Internet. And so I bought it, and, um, and I took it to New York and had them service it, and it came out beautiful. And I actually wore it for a while, and, and then I ended up finding somebody that, that wanted it. And, you know, I made a little bit of a profit even after paying for the servicing, so it was fun. But, yeah, doing, doing some deals like that, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, Craig, I bought a 911 GTS, Brett, in the house. Whoa, is that the one you sent? Okay, you sent some more pics. Okay, because I know you sent some pics the other day. Let's let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look. If my browser will ever reload here. Hmm. Let me refresh this. My uh, Gmail is always very sluggish while I'm live streaming for some reason. And the pictures have not come through yet. They're kind of taking their sweet time. And when they do come in, I will show it. Yes, I will. Meantime, I'm deleting a few images here just because I can. A few things that I don't need. And uh, it's still not showing up. Kyle, it's still not showing up in my inbox. Oh, here it is, finally. Okay. So there were three images, it looks like. Cool, cool, cool. We will show them. Here they go. Whoa, I like it. I like white. I mean, some people are like, eh, white, you know. But I like it. I like it. I always, from the days back in the day... I always like white cars because they were easier to to match the color if you had a problem and you had to fix something. Now, some of the modern whites that are like pearlescent and all the fancy stuff, they might not be as easy to match. But back in the day, white, white, just a regular white car was always the easiest to do body work on and it didn't show, right? And so for that reason, I always liked white. I like it. I like a Porsche. I mean, that, that's if you want to get a, a high-performance vehicle to have some fun with, they were always the car. Now, I don't know if they're as reliable and durable as they were back in the day, but back in the day, the 911s were, were really reliable, durable cars. You know, if you wanted something you could really drive hard and put away wet and would hold up, that was the car. So, um, let's see didn't end up buying the purple one okay i also like the white super sharp says eduardo congrats brett um yet this is a 2019 gts a uh, high-end build yeah it's beautiful good combo the gts and the gold day just well duh yeah brett's in the house um he's got to get a faux pay though to go with the um <clears throat> to go with the day chest I think he's got to join the uh, the faux pay group. 
um, <clears throat> especially if he's going to drive it the car around M- Miami. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy do a little miami vice stuff uh let's see uh yes okay brett do you also own exotic pet monkeys that gs231 is running beautifully okay oh the gs231 okay oh well yeah yeah that, that it, it it always does it's just like i mean it's like duh i mean and it's like spot on accurate. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Let's see. Um, uh, uh, Derek, uh, Tim, did you buy a day date or a Grand Seiko? I don't know who he's talking to. Um, let's see. Is an outdoor cat. Okay. Craig, um, link me to one of those bracelets, Brett. Uh, well, Brett, the, the faux pay, um, I mean, Steve's a dealer, and if you, he knows who you are, but reiterate that you're a, a wrench member in good standing and make sure that he gives you the, the wholesale deal. And if and if he if he jerks you around if he doesn't give you a super sweet deal, then let's talk. I get in touch and we'll lean on him. Okay. Now here's the thing. I got the, this is the the thick one, right? I have a blog post here. Let me see if I can find it. Give me a second here. I will find it. Yes, I will, because it has the details. Because these come in different thicknesses. And so you got to make, be sure that you compare apples to apples. And they come in different sizes. Mine, I believe, is the large. And so, okay, so here it is. It's airyguides.com slash faux pay, right? So airyguides.com slash faux pay. And this is a, a blog post about the bracelet. And I talk about it. And I give the specs here. The one that I have is 36.30 grams or 1.280 ounces, okay, and it is the large size and it's 8 millimeter in diameter, okay, and it's the exact same one that Steve has. Now, my wrist is about 7.25 inches or maybe in a little more in the summertime, and this one is is kind of you know, loose on my wrist. I like it that way. But if you like it tighter, you might need to go down to the medium, depending on the size of your wrist. Uh, So you want to make sure that you get the right size. So what I would do if I were you, is I would go to a faux pay dealer in your area and try one on. Uh, Hopefully you can find one that, that has them in stock. I mean, it's not always common, but, uh, It'd be nice to be able to try on a medium and a large and compare and make sure you get the size that you want. And then go to Steve and get the wholesale deal. I love it. It's fun. It's a fun, fun piece. So, yeah. And talk about unique. You ain't going to see that many people wearing a faux pay. Uh, Let's see. And they're super robust. I mean, they'll, they'll last you your lifetime. They're guaranteed for life, by the way. Um, uh, um, Craig, if you had one month to live, would you trade in the Prius for a 911? Probably not. I don't drive that much. Um, if I had one month to live, I'd probably go find a really nice beach somewhere and just hang out. Something like that. Um, Yeah probably just hang out and reflect right reflect uh brett is in the house need one of those i could see craig in a 911 gt3 rs um scott's in the house hi craig i want to add one more rolex to, to my collection what model would pair best with a date just um hmm that's a good question, uh, because the date just needs some wrist time to keep running. 
Um, Scott, I would go another direction. I, I would get a... Um, I'd get something else. Uh, I'd get probably a... I'd, I'd look at all the 9F movement GSs, the Grand Seikos with the 9F movement, and I'd get something sporty with the 9F movement that you really like. And that way you can just grab and go with that. You don't have to wind it up and set it and all that nonsense. Uh, and then you can wear your date just enough each day to make sure it keeps running. And I'd rotate it with something else. Because if you get two Rolexes, you're going to be in the same boat as I was when I had two Rolexes, where it was tricky for me to keep them both running. It was irritating, too. I, I'd pick up the day date to go somewhere, and it would have, will have stopped. And I'm like, damn, I didn't wear it enough yesterday, right? Or vice versa. I'd pick up the GMT Master, and it had stopped because I didn't wear it enough, you know. And so I was trying to keep them both running by switching them off. And it just became a hassle. So I like to pair a um, automatic watch, automatic winding watch with a uh, a uh, a nine F movement. Uh, yeah, that would be my 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 way to go. Because I have the same problem now, but at least this one's manual wind. I don't have to unscrew the crown. I can just wind it. And by the way, I will wind it when it's on wrist. It doesn't bother me. This is a very robust crown. People say, oh, you shouldn't wind it while it's on wrist. You'll twist it funny and screw it up. And I don't, it's not going to hurt this watch. This watch is robust. But yeah, I don't mind having a manual wind if it's got a 72-hour power reserve and, and I don't have to unscrew the crown and I don't have to set the date. If it does stop, it's real easy to, to set the time and get this running again. It's not a hassle where with the day date, I had to get everything in sync and it became a hassle. So just some, some food for thought on, on that whole situation because, again, I buy my watches to wear and use. Scott, uh, what size date chest? If it's a 36, I'd say sports model like a Sub or Explorer Polar. There you go, Eduardo. It's good, good tips there. Tim in the house. I have not bought a GS yet, but will do when the time is right, probably when I get to Japan, when international travel is permitted again. Good, good points. Brett says awesome. Tim, how long is the flight for you to Tokyo? Uh, Brett Smart, they probably have, um, <clears throat> have them downtown in the Diamond District. I think Kyle and I are going tomorrow. Maybe we can call in live from there. Uh, just check and see, check for a faux pay dealer, F-O-P-E, faux pay dealer. And, uh, yeah, I would stop in and see what they have. get some prices, and then contact Steve and say, Steve, sharpen your pencil. Sharpen that pencil up. Uh, sent another email. We will look at that. Craig, we need an update on the ambulance. Okay, I, I will have updates on that. A used Porsche or one Bitcoin. I will go to Sapporo to see my wife's family. So 16 hours uh, via Taiwan. One BTC. BTC is just getting started, bros. 5X from here, Brett says in the house. Yeah, the the I don't I think this bull run is still in the early stages. And it really, if you step back far enough, if you have a long-term view and you step back far enough, Bitcoin has been in one constant bull run. If you look at the chart, if you step back and look at the, the whole chart, it's basically a 45 degree angle up from day one to now. Sure, it's got some bumps in the road, but basically it's that's the trajectory. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's pretty powerful what, what it's done. Wow, okay, longer than I thought. Automatic movement with manual winding capability is the way to go. Uh, let's see, 10 hours if direct Melbourne to Tokyo got it uh, much better. Speaking about expensive things, does anyone here insure their timepieces? That's a good question. I, I do not have mine insured. I probably should, but I do not. All right, let's look at the email. Let's do that. And then I will talk about the ambulance because I have given some more thought to that and I have made some tentative decisions. Tentative. There's another picture. Another picture of the setting there, of the exotic, exotic automobiles. And let's see, here's another one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. A gold date chest, not something you see every day, a gold date chest in mint condition. On the channel, gold date chest. Mm -hmm. I think that's a six digit date chest. Let's see. Um, we will see a record high here real soon. I'm glad you used the term record high because I, I hate it when people say all time high. I'm like, no, I don't think so. I, I think the all time high will be like a thousand years from now. I think we're going to see a bunch of record highs between now and then, but the all-time high when it finally peaks out and never goes any higher, that could be a thousand years from now. It may never happen. It may pump forever. Somebody said Bitcoin is designed to pump forever. <laughs> oh, that's wild. Brett says 72,000 next. Um, Kyle... Craig, if we get to 250K, the motorcycle cross-country run could morph into the yacht world tour. <laughs> um, and Red says, ah, so good. A yacht world tour sounds great. We'll all throw in 0.1 BTC. Craig, have you ever stepped foot inside a GameStop store? No, I haven't. <laughs> and Kyle's laughing out loud. All-time high is when the S-curve stops. Uh, Brett says, yes. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, here's the deal on the ambulance. I, the more I look and the more I research, I think that I want something equivalent to the Braun um, Super Chief model, what they call their Braun Super Chief model. That's the top of the line, 14-foot box, 73 and a half inches inside, so over six feet inside clearance, and just top of the line everything on a medium duty chassis, uh, I think I'm going to hold out. And that's really what I was bidding on down there in Florida. The one that I dropped out at, at 25,000, it went for 25,000 after the buyer's fee, that one in Florida. The more I researched this, I should have gone higher on that rig. I should have gone at least a couple grand higher and maybe that guy would have dropped out and maybe I'd have it because that's that was a rare beast. You don't, we don't see them that often. But I'm going to keep an eye on all the auction sites. And my guy has a medium duty up in Pennsylvania, the guy that's a, that deals in, in them. He got one in and he sent me some pictures. And it's okay. It's a nice rig. It's on the Chevrolet Kodiak chassis, it's, which is also a medium duty chassis. It's pretty cool, but um, I don't know. I, I, I think I need to hold out for, for something really fantastic, something really amazing. And here's the thing. <clears throat> I might not even get one. I might get the, um, the um, MCI that I was looking at. Let's see, is it here? Yeah, the MCI. I, I'm just more and more intrigued with this MCI, and I'll tell you why. It's a 1994. It's got the Series 60 before all the pollution crap. It's got the beautiful walnut interior. I can re I can update like the couch and some of those things, right? But the walnut woodwork is just beautiful. I love walnut. And this was done originally by Angola Coach. They are no joke. They do great work, and that, that's a side-by-side -side, uh, residential refrigerator. This thing has top-of-the-line everything in it. It's gonna, some of the systems might need to, to be updated. I'm, I might need to like replace the Aqua Hot system and some, some of the things. You know, I might have to do some things to it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's got some age to it, but it's always been kept inside. It's, it's a two-owner coach, and it's got the steering on the tag axle. It's got a lot of things going for it. A lot of things, it checks a lot of boxes. So, yeah. So that's a real possibility. And he hasn't been able to sell it. And he needs a cash buyer. And I've got the cash sitting in my bank account. So, yeah. It might be a match made in heaven. Um, let's see, all-time high when the S-curve stops, yes, and, and fiat terms probably doesn't stop. 
But see, when I say all-time high, I mean in purchasing power. I don't mean in dollar, U.S. dollars, because you can't measure it by U.S. dollars because eventually the U.S. dollar will be worthless, right? But I mean in like today's purchasing power, if you move forward, you say, okay, in today's purchasing power, I could buy a nice used Porsche for 50 grand, right? So I could buy a nice used Porsche for one Bitcoin, let's say, right? So... 10 years from now, I'll probably be able to buy 10 nice used Porsches, minimum, maybe 20, right? So you see, you got to compare the purchasing power. The increase in the purchasing power is what we're looking at, okay? And I think the purchasing power of Bitcoin will continue to increase forever, assuming it does what it's supposed to do, assuming it becomes the default worldwide currency slash store value it's where everybody will want to store their wealth and their money and and since it's limited supply it it, it has to kind of keep going up indefinitely i would think because the economy continues to grow uh so yeah i'd have ups and downs but i i think it has to pump if it's successful that's an if there uh i think it has to pump pretty much forever um Let's see, Craig, are you also looking into tanks via sir? Craig, what is more likely, you going to do some shopping in the GameStop or investing in GameStop stop, stop stock? I think that's, I think I'm, I, I, you know, if I was going to do the GameStop thing, I should have already done it, right? I don't, is it, is that peaked? Is that the whole thing over with? I don't know what the deal is. I'm not a trader. I don't. I don't play around with all this, but that's for young people. If they can get in and out and make some money and convert it to Bitcoin, more power to them. If they can, if they can trade in some of these altcoin scams and and come out and make some money, I mean, I'm not against it. I just don't do it. I just buy and hold Bitcoin. I'm old fashioned. Uh, David Lee in the house. Bitcoin seems like it could raise in value forever, assuming inflation gets out of hand. Owners of Bitcoin will be able to deal with the inflation just fine. Well, yeah, because it's a limited limited item. Kyle in the house, what would you offer on that MCI to start negotiations? 50K? Uh, that thing is boss, Craig. Uh, do you have a driver? I would probably drive it myself. I, I don't mind driving the coach. I drove my, my Wander Lodge all the time. See, if you have a driver, you got to put him up somewhere when you get to the donut destination and all that. I mean, so I don't mind driving it. Um, so 50K. Yeah, that might be a good starting point. I haven't seen it in person, so I'd have to go look at it and kind of pick it apart and and see if it has the bones that I like and and see if it uh, if it is as as solid as I think it probably is as far as the the base. If you will see, those are all stainless steel. The chassis and everything, it's all mostly stainless steel, and that's always been in the South. It's never been up in the uh, Rust Belt, so it it's probably a pretty solid. Uh, starting point um so yeah i think 50k would would absolutely be a good starting point let's see um i wish california allowed straight exhaust (laughs) there you go Uh, a lot of people on these series 60s they put straight exhaust on them see the neat thing about this one is it doesn't have any of that pollution crap It doesn't have any of the pollution control stuff that they started slapping on the diesel engines later on, right? And so that, to me, is a big advantage. Um, Yeah. And also, it's very rare to see newer coaches with, like, the full walnut interior like that and all that. I mean, they got away from all that because, first of all, walnut got too expensive, and it's a lot of work, and... You know, people want these like Formica, you know, white stuff and all this junk, you know. So, yeah. Uh, Is Brie also looking into bug out vehicles? I asked Brie if if she would want to learn how to drive the the ambulance if we get one. And she said, yeah, I'd love to drive it. So, (laughs) I think, I, I don't know, I mean, she might be able to drive right over that Porsche. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys think? 
just drive right over it. Um, let's see, Craig, my ex-wife has an RV. Which which make of RV do you recommend? I don't recommend any, quote, RVs. I mean, you better get a motor coach, get something commercial grade, get something built, you know, to to go a million miles. I mean, these MCIs, that thing's that thing's designed to go a million miles. Uh, they're robust. Most RVs are junk, and so, and that's why the ambulances are intriguing. I mean, that's a commercial grade rig, right? That that's built without regard to cost, and they can be converted into a small RV. I mean, and now it would be small, it'd be compact. But the advantage there is you could take it into all the, the national parks. You can't take that into most of the national parks. You'd have to park outside the park somewhere and drive in with your other car. Um, so, so there's some advantages to having a smaller rig, right? So that's where the, the, the ambulance converted into a RV slash mobile office comes in handy. Um, all right, I think we're going to wrap it up. We've been going for about an hour. We've had a very productive show. We've dealt with a lot of issues, and um, that's all good. And I'm wearing the 002 Stunner, which is stunning. A Stunner, which is stunning. And uh, sent another email. Okay, let's look. Kyle is taking the place of uh, <laughs> of Lance. Lance is missing in action, so Kyle has stepped in. Okay, and this is a Grand Seiko. Okay, yeah, I've seen this one. I, I've seen this one. I, I, I don't like the look of this one as much as the, oh, the look of the 002. Um... So yeah, it's I've seen this model though. And it's interesting, but again, I I prefer the look of the 002. So yeah. But gold is gold. I like gold. Uh Lance call in. We can't end. Oh boy. All right, folks. Well, anyway, we we did a show. We pulled off a show this week. Steve was promising a show. Didn't materialize. He's busy as a one-armed paper hanger over there. But uh, hopefully he'll be doing a show soon. Oh, let me play. Hey, I haven't pushed the buttons. Let me push the buttons here. Let's look at the faux pay again. There's the faux pay with the 038 and the 002. Here's the 002 and the sun. Here's another 002 photo. Here's the 231 Stunner. And the lovely Lady Brianna, briefitdance.com, briefitdance.com. There's the 005. Kind of, we kind of missed that one a little bit, huh? That's, that's the 005 Stunner. They're very affordable. And then there is the gold money clip with the 18238 Day Date. And there's the 18238 Day Date. What do you guys think? Pushing the buttons on the way out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And we will wrap, wrap, wrap this puppy up.